know your health. Hello and welcome. You have probably already tried to quit smoking or have at least thought about it. Today we're going to discuss a new understanding of why people smoke and potential ways to quit smoking. Please think about your own smoking habits and how your doctor or other health care providers can help you quit and stay quit. Well, we will talk about issues regarding how your health can be affected by smoking, why it's so hard to quit, the health benefits you may see when you quit smoking, what you can do to prepare to quit, and how to actually quit, how to stay quit. First, let's go through some of the potential risks to your health from smoking cigarettes. Health risks. Smoking is the number one preventable cause of premature deaths in the United States. There are almost a million people, 440,000 die every year in the United States from smoking-related diseases. Health risks that can reduce when you quit smoking. Lung cancer can often take many years to develop. Cigarette smoking damages cells. This cell damage can lead to tumors that often start in the lungs. Once lung cancer occurs, the cells can break away from the lungs and spread to other parts of the body. COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, refers to a group of lung conditions that are accompanied by a blockage of airflow out of the lungs. It includes emphysema and chronic bronchitis. COPD is different from asthma, but it can be hard to tell them apart. COPD makes it difficult to breathe and may get slowly worse as the damage to the lungs progress. Stroke can be caused either by a blood clot blocking the flow of blood to the brain or by a blood vessel rupturing and preventing blood flow to the brain. Cigarette smoke damages the walls of the blood vessels. This makes it easier for clots to form and increase the risk for a stroke. Coronary heart disease, CHD, is caused when the coronary arteries become narrow or clogged and cannot supply enough blood to the heart. This causes the heart to work harder. Cigarette smoke narrows the blood vessels and also reduces their ability to carry oxygen throughout the body, increasing your risk for CHD. Also, women who smoke and take birth control pills are 13 and a half times more likely to have a heart attack than women who do not smoke and take birth control pills. Accumulated evidence suggests that cervical cancer can be caused by smoking. Besides health risk, the health risks from smoking are so well known that many businesses, advocacy groups, and individuals have made it really clear that they are concerned about smoking and the effects of smoking. And the government is responding to these concerns with laws that restrict or prohibit smoking in public places. So why is it so hard to quit? For many people, smoking is two things at the same time. You may crave the nicotine in a cigarette, and you may feel unsettled when you get, don't get it. You may get used to having a cigarette when doing certain things, so smoking becomes part of your daily habits. When you smoke a cigarette, nicotine is sent to your brain in a few seconds. Nicotine starts a series of biochemical reactions in your brain that ultimately cause the release of dopamine. Dopamine gives you a feeling of pleasure and calm. The level of dopamine drops between cigarettes and you start to feel jumpy. Your brain craves the nicotine so that more dopamine will be released to make you feel calm again. And the cycle goes on of craving, smoking, calming, and craving. It is hard to quit because some of the effects of nicotine from cigarette smoking are calming and reduce appetite. Nicotine has the potential to be addictive. Nicotine can have both a stimulating and calming effect at the same time. Nicotine can eliminate the feeling of hunger, which may interfere with your good nutrition. You might feel bad when you stop smoking, but some smokers don't experience any of these withdrawal symptoms. If you do experience withdrawal symptoms, these often go away in a few weeks. As you quit smoking, the potential for weight gain does exist. Not everybody gains weight. Many ex-smokers will gain a little averaging about six to eight pounds. About one of 10 people who quit smoking do gain a lot of weight, as much as 30 pounds. The risk of gaining weight is the highest during the two years that follow quitting. 
After that, the risk of weight change associated with smoking sensation goes down. If you do gain weight, ask your doctor for suggestions on how to lose it again when you have your nicotine cravings under control. You can prevent or limit weight gain with a healthy lifestyle that includes low calorie healthy meals and snacks and regular exercise. Most habits are hard to break. Your brain expects a cigarette during certain activities and doing the activity can trigger a desire for a smoke. It is then very hard to do that activity without a cigarette. Smoking becomes part of your daily habits. You might smoke when you make a phone call, have your morning coffee, or wait at a bus stop. You may not know what to do with your hands if you're not holding a cigarette. Also, remember that a smoker's brain knows that nicotine will help release calming dopamine, so stressful situations such as traffic jams or difficult jobs can also trigger a desire for a cigarette, even if it's not part of your daily routine. What we will talk about, with all these things stacked against quitting, you might think it's hopeless, but it's not. Quitting smoking can have major and immediate health benefits. 24 hours after quitting, chance of a heart attack begins to decrease. Two weeks to three months after quitting, blood circulation may improve and lung function may increase up to 30%. One to nine months after quitting, cilia, tiny hair-like structures that make mucus out of the lungs, can regain normal function in the lungs, increasing the ability to handle mucus, clean the lungs, and reduce risk of local infection. You might actually cough more for a while than when you smoke, but the cough will be productive and will eventually stop. Congestion, fatigue, and shortness of breath start to decrease. One year after quitting, the risk of developing a heart attack is now half the risk of a smoker. Five plus years after quitting, the risk of having a stroke is reduced to that of a non-smoker. Ten years after quitting, Lung cancer death is about half of a smoker's and the risk of other types of cancers, mouth, esophagus, bladder, cervix, and pancreas has decreased. Other potential benefits from quitting smoking include food will begin to taste better. Your sense of smell and taste may return to normal. Your breath, clothes, hair, and nails may not smell of cigarettes. You can save money by not smoking or buying cigarettes. If you kept track of how many packs of cigarettes you bought in a week, you can see how much money you have saved by quitting. Other potential benefits from quitting smoking can include ordinary activities may no longer leave you out of breath, and you may have more energy. You may be in control of yourself in your life rather than being controlled by cigarettes and your cravings. Quitting smoking may reduce your risk of developing COPD, lung cancer, and other smoking-related diseases. Preparing to quit. Smoking is the number one preventable cause of premature death in the United States. Quitting smoking may be the most important step that you can take to improve your health. But quitting is a journey, not an event. Start the journey with good preparation. You may have the best chance of quitting if you prepare your mind and body to quit. Think about why you want to quit. Find out how your doctor can help you overcome nicotine cravings when you quit smoking. Figure out what changes you can make in your own habits to help you avoid smoking. Take a moment. Think about 10 reasons you want to quit smoking. Here are some common reasons why people want to quit smoking. For your family, you don't want to risk getting cancer. You want to be a good role model for your children. And you want to regain control of your life. You probably can think of other reasons too. People are different from each other. One plan to quit smoking may not work for some, but for others. The quit telephone support numbers. Individual or group counseling can help many people quit and stay quit. This can be done in combination with medications. Quit smoking medications. Quit smoking medications are available by prescription or over the counter at local pharmacies. Talk to your doctor to decide which plan will work best for you. Sometimes a combination of treatments work better than just a single approach. Choose a quick day within two or three weeks and make it real. Mark it on your calendar. 
By setting a target date to quit smoking, you will have time to prepare yourself for this date, mentally and physically. Be aware of your triggers. Triggers are things that make you want to smoke. Trigger are things such as social environment, work stress, sitting in traffic, and ordinary routines. If possible, try to pick up a day that is likely to have fewer triggers than others. Maybe a weekend is less stressful for you than a weekday. Choose a day when you can avoid alcohol and minimize contact with other people who smoke. State your intentions. Tell your friends and family members about your quit date. If you can't bring yourself to tell everyone, then tell at least one person you can trust. This will help them to understand if you don't want to do the same things you usually do with them over a cigarette, like lingering over a cup of coffee and cigarettes, or hanging on the telephone and smoking. Telling someone will help you to put yourself on the spot and solidify your commitment to yourself. Telling others might be really hard to do, especially if you have tried to quit many times before. When you tell others you are planning to quit, ask for their support. Ask them to be understanding if you are not at your best after quitting. And to support you to try again if you slip. Quitting is a journey, not an event. Start changing your environment. Before your quit day, throw away all of your lighters, ashtrays, and other smoking gear, including cigarette packs. Some things you can do to avoid having a cigarette in early days of quitting are eating sugar-free candy or chewing gum, change your routine, go for a walk outside or around the office, and avoid situations where your triggers exist. You can practice doing these things before you quit to help you break your routines. Once you're prepared, it's time to do it. Successful quitting is a matter of commitment and not luck, but it can be done. This is your target date that you have told everyone about and that you have been preparing for. Throw out your cigarettes. Be sure to follow your doctor's treatment advice. Practice the changes in your routine. Craving is not a constant state. You will have moments when you urge to smoke is very strong, but the moment will pass. Remember that you just need to get through each moment of craving one by one. Staying quit. Once you have quit smoking, the important thing is to stay quit and maintain your new smoking-free lifestyle. You may be tempted to have a cigarette. If you're tempted, you need to make a decision at that point. You can stay on the road to being a non-smoker or you can relapse and will have to start quitting all over again. What happens when you cheat? When you stop smoking, the chemical craving stops after a few days or weeks. For most ex-smokers, just one cigarette can take the craving right back to where it was before they quit. What are some things you can do if you have a craving? Well, drink plenty of water. Eat a light snack or chew gum. Exercise or do hobbies. Check with your doctor before you start a new activity, though. Breathe deeply and hold for five seconds. Refer to your list of reasons to quit. Smoking becomes linked to certain activities of your life. Some of these activities can be done instead of smoking and will help to unlink the activities in smoking. What if you slip up and smoke? Very few people quit smoking and stay quit on their first try. If you do slip, it will help to know why you slipped and to think about what you can do if you do have the same cravings again. Don't be discouraged. There is a difference between a slip and a relapse. You don't have to use a slip as an excuse to go back to smoking. If you slip and have a cigarette, review what happened and recommit to total abstinence from smoking. Use the handouts that are available. How to Quit is a checkbook sized tool that will help you quit account of your health, improve communication with your health care provider, or remind you of what you've learned today. Use it to keep track of your progress on the road to becoming a non-smoker. Awareness. Smoking is the number one preventable cause of premature death in the United States. Smoking causes many health problems. Quitting is an important step to improving your health. Preparation. You will prepare mentally and physically to quit. Quitting.
quitting smoking is not easy, but it can be done. You will need to change your behavior to adjust to a life without smoking. Maintenance. Staying quit is one of the most important steps to a healthier lifestyle. Always remember the reasons you quit and the hard work you did to get to this point. Once you've overcome cravings, you can begin to enjoy the benefits of staying quit.